Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the Mercury Gemini capsule set. It's a 148 scale kit from Ravel number 1834. Now this classic kit has a skill level that today would be about a level 4 for intermediate to advanced builders because of the small parts involved. Now at the height of the Cold War, the American people awoke on October 7, 1958 to the beeping pulse of Russia's Sputnik 1 as it orbited Earth. At that moment, the space race was on and Russia had taken the early lead. All of the Mercury and Gemini space missions were developmental steps for Kennedy's stated goal to land a man on the moon before the end of the decade in the 60s. Now the lessons learned from those baby steps were robust um, enough to launch the U.S. space exploration program uh, controlled by NASA. This kit was originally released in 1964 and this is the 2012 issue. There are 142 parts molded in light gray plastic with accurate water slide decal markings and updated instructions. When you're done, the Mercury capsule with the escape tower is about six and a half inches long and the Gemini is about four and a half inches long. This review is brought to you in part by Riders Hobby Shops where the fun begins. Stop in to one of Riders' two convenient Michigan locations where you'll find a full range of the latest hobby products, supplies, parts, tools, and paint. Uh, here you see the uh, contents of the box and uh, I'll show you the, uh, the layout of all the pieces. There's actually quite a few in there uh, because there's two complete models, but a lot of them are very small. Now remember to heed the uh, manufacturer safety and use guidelines when you hear or see any of the products used in the review. We'll start by constructing the mercury capsule and in and of itself it's smaller and has less pieces but they are smaller <laughs> and more difficult to work with uh, and um, by itself it's smaller than the, the Gemini but with the escape tower it's a, a little larger. Now you'll find as you um, go through the kit that the sprue connectors for these small parts are actually almost as big as the parts themselves so great care must be taken to remove them from the sprue tree and uh, to clean them up and get them uh, presentable and cleaned off of the parts. You will find that there is flash on most all of the pieces in this kit. It's a very old kit uh, and it'll need to be cleaned up so uh, just expect that you'll find them on every part from uh, most of the model. Now the escape tower braces uh, I removed from the sprue and then I tacked them down on some numbered tapes to keep them separate so that I would re uh, be able to reassemble them uh, in the correct positions after I cleaned them up. And now on the uh, back side of one of the parts, part number five, uh, that's the escape tower fuel tank, the bottom cap. Um, on, the, um, on the underside, well, from this angle, the black arrow is pointing to this piece and on the uh, back side there, uh, there was a couple of nubs uh, from the sprue uh, attachments and they interfered with the fit you know to the rest of the uh, uh, tank so I had to um, uh, clean that up with a rotary tool bit before it would fit. In order to facilitate assembly of the uh, escape tower fuel tank I kind of turned it upside down as you see here and use a pin vise to drill a hole in the center of the uh, top cap there uh, to um, mount it upside down so that I could uh, put all the engine nozzles and parts into place and keep them in alignment until the uh, glue set up. You can see here uh, some of the um, sprues are pretty thick and they have dimples in them right where the part numbers uh, used to be uh, and in this case I couldn't tell if that was exactly the part number until I matched it up with the instructions visually um, and you'll also find that some of the parts have the part numbers um, engraved right inside or on them. So there's that issue too sometimes uh, for identification. Now you'll see on this um, piece uh, uh, there's a large ejector pin nub that is not flush uh, and it interferes with the uh, part fit to the support column. So I used a flat file to uh, remove it um, 
so it would fit correctly. And part number 26 also has um, another one right in the center of the back side. And they need to be removed so that the parts will fit together. Uh, and you'll find that these, um, these are going to be an issue in other areas too. Um, the capsule door uh, had ejector pin nubs removed uh, so that they would uh, fit together. And they also had some flash on them, of course. But in some places, it's difficult to tell where the what was flash and what was uh, edge. So I used a sanding stick to remove the flash until the door edge was straight. And then the back side uh, had four large ejector pin nubs. And if you glue the door into place on the model, you'll, you'll never see the nubs. But I, I removed them anyway. It's just a matter of preference for that. And now here at the um, uh, inside the capsule, the astronaut figure is seated. And these are all molded in. So there's paint callouts uh, for most of these parts you can see. I did deviate a bit. The, uh, the helmet is white uh, uh, as opposed to silver. Now the centerline oxygen hose is an olive drab. And, um, before, you know, obviously I'm not the world's best face painter. Uh, uh, and uh, this uh, fellow looks like he's experiencing liftoff for the first time. The retro rocket exhaust nozzles were smaller than expected, uh, and they were pretty well hidden on the sprue. They actually were uh, much smaller than seemed to be indicated in the instructions. Uh, so I had to locate them by part number on the sprue, and they were so small, uh, they just didn't have much resemblance to nozzles. So I couldn't locate them visually, but here you see them in place, and that's what they look like uh, at the bottom there. You see the capsule walls here, parts uh, 27, 28, and 30, and that's a three-part assembly. The instruction says uh, you should assemble them one at a time onto the heat shield, but trying to align all three wall sections was turning into a juggling act. Uh, so I assembled the three cabin walls off of the heat shield, uh, and then after the glue had dried, I installed the instrument panel, uh, the support column, into the capsule shell. Then I installed the capsule shell onto the heat shield and floor assembly. And doing this worked out uh, much easier for me. After that was uh, dry, I painted it Model Master's gunmetal. And then the heat shields were painted with some uh, basic uh, tester silver 1146. The window capsule is cut from a piece of clear acetate film. And it comes with the model. Um, and the instructions uh, have a window template there um, as uh, part of step two. So I, I made a copy of the instructions and uh, that, uh, you know, section. And then I used the copy to cut out the window. Now I used also uh, some testers um, uh, clear cement to attach the uh, cut window into the capsule uh, with uh, just a touch of glue on the edges. Now the arrow here indicates uh, a location where I added an ounce of weight to the back end of the capsule behind the pilot seat uh, on the bottom of the heat shield there. It, and uh, you can, or on inside uh, of it, and this extra weight helps the capsule remain in the proper nose-up orientation when mounted on its stand. The uh, three retro rocket straps, parts 34, are very, very delicate and small. Um, I really couldn't sand them off, so uh, I simply fashioned them into sh basically straightness with uh, a very sharp uh, new hobby knife blade. The display base uh, for the uh, kits, um, they're like a uh, fashioned um, s steel beam with, um, you know, lightener holes in them. And they all have um, ejector pin uh, marks inside I used a hobby knife to scrape most of those uh, flush and then a um, rotary tool with a sanding disc in it to kind of clean those up. Uh, both of the uh, display um, stands are like that. With construction finished on the capsule, it's time to put the um, decals on. And the markings uh, on the decal set are for multiple, um, you know, uh, missions, so you can choose the one that you like, or um, you know you can use a different one for all of them. Uh, the uh, decals are applied then, and uh, it has a corrugated sheet metal skin, uh, which uh, you know reduces the weight and keeps it uh, strong. But um, for our purposes, you're probably going to want to use 
uh, some setting solution so that they uh, nestle right into the uh, uh, contours of the, uh, the outside skin there. After that, you know, a quick uh, coat of clear after they had dried overnight, uh, and uh, that'll keep them in uh, good shape. Now here you see the um, actually finished Gemini capsule. We're going to start building that, but there's only one way to see how the um, fit is for the exterior, which is not real good. Um, but nonetheless, uh, I'll show you here just so you get an idea of what's coming up. Now the uh, instrument panel, the crew compartment, the astronauts, you know, first I finished them mostly as I did the Mercury capsule because this was actually um, a prototype of the capsule that uh, was rendered by Ravel back in the day. Uh, it didn't end up looking this way, and the astronauts had different, uh, uh, you know, uh, suits, and they were different colors, but um, I finished this as it was the prototype, uh, and that's what the pieces are that are in this kit, uh, including landing gear. Um, so we'll get to that too. Now, it has more control surfaces inside the cabin, and the overhead support arm, as well as the lower console, which held the uh, control stick, gives you a chance to practice dry brushing skills. Now look at the internet for pictures of the actual Gemini capsule uh, to get an idea of colors for the ship uh, and pretty much based on the original concept. The gear doors, like I said, uh, don't, don't have a good fit. Uh, they're not, uh, it's not easy to fill the seams because there's uh, rivets and corrugation there. And like I said earlier, this uh, is an early concept model uh, of the uh, Gemini craft. Now, also, I did take liberty and um, build the unit as a um, more modern version of the Gemini, which uh, was fitted for splashdown, uh, as opposed to using the landing gear and the main original concept. Uh, so the gear doors are closed, and uh, I'm not using the landing gear for my model. In the beginning of the instructions for Gemini, I found uh, an issue here. And you note the locator tab on the ridge molded into the bottom of the inside surface there. Um, the instructions show the forward adapter ring, that's uh, parts of 111 and 112, with a ridge around the inside and pointed downwards uh, towards the bottom. Well, this is wrong, as I found out in step 3 when I tried to fit the uh, adapter channel in to the adapter ring. The adapter channel fits into a D-hole, uh, with the bulk of the angled adapter pointed downward and installing the forward adapter ring as the instructions specify orients the D-hole in the opposite direction. So the best solution is to install it as the instructions show but drill the D-hole out so that it will um, the electronics adapter channel will fit into it properly. Here's a look at it as it's installed and the D-hole orientation is upside down. Drill this out a bit to allow the uh, electronic adapter channel to be uh, fitted. Now I assembled the three-part capsule shell for the Gemini just like I did with the Mercury, gluing the three sides together, and after the glue had set, installed the capsule shell onto the heat shield. The capsule entry doors for Gemini have upper and lower um, you know, rods at the corners, and these are uh, hinges to allow the door uh, to open and close. And getting the doors installed without breaking those off is tricky, but it can be done. First insert the lower hinge um, post and then uh, bend the upper part of each door just slightly to insert the upper rib. Um, and as with the mercury capsule, this part of the instruction booklet is has a printed window template and I copied that and made another one out of the uh, acetate sheet. And here you see the landing gear that were uh, initially uh, conceived for the Gemini missions but were never developed or used. Uh, and as such, I did not uh, build those completely. And this view of the Gemini retro rocket housing shows the capsule support tabs. And the uh, housing, which is part number 131, has a cross-shaped support at the top of the housing and that needs to be removed. The challenge to removing it 
is its proximity to the capsule uh, support tabs and these tabs are filled in with flash and very small and delicate. Now as I was removing the support arm uh, the, and cleaning the flash from the tabs I managed to break one of the loops off so I glued the broken piece back on and finished cleaning them. The retro rocket engines and exhaust bills uh, are assembled in this step and it's worth noting however that these parts will never be seen after they're installed. The capsule's heat shield sits at the top of the housing assembly and the uh, equipment module and it's completely closing the top end and glues to the bottom of the retro rocket housing. Now that housing is completely enclosed at the top and bottom of all your uh, design work and this finishing so it'll remain unseen unless you uh, you know don't permanently glue the capsule heat shield on. Uh, you could actually just use some low-tech uh, glue uh, some you know some of the fugitive type glues they use to you know uh, put labels on some magazines and things. Now we'll work on the equipment module housing and this is the lowest uh, lower lower most housing uh, that contains all of the capsules fuel cells oxygen cells electronics etc and um, I assembled each of the round uh, fuel cells and oxygen cells on their sprues and painted them there and doing this uh, it allowed me to increase spacing of the parts on the sprue for easier painting and allowed me to paint each one without getting more on me than on the part. So these parts are very small and there's no other way to paint them short of drilling a hole in them uh, and then putting a toothpick on them or and gluing them to it or, or filling them up or hiding them. So I just painted them on the sprue and touched up any edges I needed to um, when I removed them. And so here you get uh, a look at that housing. Um, the equipment module housing that you know the details are picked out here. You can see um, the colorization that uh, you know that I used and they're not really numbered on the exploded view but it's shown in the parts index at the front of the booklet as part number 141. Now it also has uh, those call outs for the housing but not for the exterior. The housing should be white on the outside and olive drab on the inside. I was off just a little bit to uh, install the support strut into location that's part 142 uh, for the um, fuel cell supply piping now, and it's pretty ambiguous on the instructions but estimating where it should go uh, a better way to install it would be to install the fuel cell piping and fuel cells uh, parts 135 to 139 in their proper locations first and then put the support strut into position uh, I had to break mine loose from the wall of the housing and then reinstall it in the correct place. So after it was uh, properly installed, then of course I just touched up the uh, olive drab green on the inside. Moving on to final assembly and then the decals, the equipment module housing details were picked out. And after all the parts were installed and the three major subsections uh, were assembled, um, that included the capsule, the retro rocket housing, and the equipment module housing. And then I used my smallest brush and a variety of paint colors to pick out the details inside that equipment module. And when I went to install the maneuvering thruster rockets, those are parts number 158, those four of them, I couldn't find them anywhere, and I couldn't find anywhere on the sprues where they were numbered. Um, so I'm not sure they were included in the kit, you could, of course, uh, scratch built those and, and put them into place. The display base went together just like it did on the Mercury uh, capsule model. And as with that, uh, it calls for the display bases to be painted silver, but um, I thought it would look better in gloss black, so that's how I painted mine. I didn't have to install a, uh, a bottom weight on the Gemini model because its uh, weights and proportions uh, kept it in the right attitude. Now if you decide to display the capsule by itself with landing gear down uh, as shown here you'll probably need to glue some weights in the bottom to keep it in uh, the correct orientation. And I always use uh, just lead fishing weights for mine because it's dense and it's heavy and it seems to be the best thing to use for weight. With the capsule painted uh, in the same manner as the, the uh, Mercury I went ahead and um, uh, after it had all been assembled and dried, 
I started to put the um, uh, decals into position and it's a difficult uh, textured surface to um, you know do so you'll need some setting solution and they nestle in well because they're pretty thin uh, but you'll also find one difference um, the Gemini doesn't have any of the mission markings like the Mercury because this the model was made before they had any Gemini uh, spacecraft missions uh, so the only decals uh, are just the standard United States marking that NASA used uh, back then. And so here you see um, the, the numbered parts uh, and the open uh, doors to the capsule. Um, section number one is the equipment module housing. Number two is the retro rocket housing. Three is the uh, crew capsule. And four is the electronics adapter channel. That's the... Um, the thing that's just uh, kind of stuck on the side there. Well, there you have it. Your models are complete. Now, while they're fairly simple construction, the amount of flash and mold lines uh, that were on the uh, 2012 release uh, made a lot, made for a lot of cleanup fun, and uh, some of the parts had to be cleaned were so small and delicate that uh, I actually did break a couple, but none that I couldn't fix. Now. Uh, because of that and because of um, uh, the, the small parts, I would say this is uh, not the uh, level 2 skill set uh, required that it shows on the box. Uh, maybe if you bought one of the originals, uh, there wouldn't be quite so much flash, but you're still going to get, you know, uh, a number of issues with the uh, sprue attachments, etc., and ejector pin marks. Now, the other thing about it is that um, this is a nice kit or display to show the younger people uh, the earliest uh, stages of uh, the U.S. space program's manned flight. We hope you like this step-by-step -step premium model kit review, and so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the icon in the lower right of any of our reviews, or you can find us on Facebook or our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks!